If, as I suggest, you've selected CodeLight as the editor that you will be using in this course, then you'll want to get started to find out what features are in it. I just want to give you a very quick overview of some of the essentials in this video. First of all, the thing you'll notice is that the code is coloured. This is syntax sensitive, so that different elements, such as preprocessor directives, for example the hash include, are coloured differently from the names of variables, from the way that numbers are coloured, and from the way that strings are coloured. Then there's code collapsing. These little arrows in the margin can be clicked to hide blocks of code. And in a long file, that's quite useful. Then there's code completion. If you have variables with certain names, you can enter part of the name, press on Windows Control Space, and a little pop-up hint prompts you to select which variable you mean. Each program you write is called a project, and you can have multiple projects in a workspace. A workspace is just a collection of projects. And you can see that I have two projects here loaded into my workspace, and they're listed in this pane here. And I can expand each project to see what my source is. When I want to switch from one project to another, that is, I want to select the active project so that when I compile my code, that's the project that is built and run, I can just click this icon up here, and it lets me pick the active project, and watch the colouring in this panel. The active project turns to green when it is selected. If I want to add a new project, I can right-click the top-level icon here and create a new project by selecting here and filling out the details in this dialog box. If I want to create a new workspace, that is a new collection of projects, I select the Workspace menu and create New Workspace or I can open a workspace. Now, I supply workspaces for use in this course, and so you'll often be opening the workspaces that I've supplied. When you're ready to run your programs, you'll need to build them. You can do that from the Build menu. Often, you might want to build in any changes you've made to your code, so to make sure that you're building and running the most recent version of your code, you can select Build and Run Project. And once it's built, the project pops up in this sort of window on Windows or on the terminal in the Macintosh, and you can see the results of your program. You can configure many of the settings in CodeLight so that if you don't like the colouring, for example, you can select the Settings, Syntax, Highlight and Fonts menu item, and here you can customize individual colors by selecting colors here and applying them. And similarly you can set other settings, for example keyboard shortcuts. Now most of the time the way that CodeLight works on Windows and on the Mac is pretty much the same. Of course, there will be some differences to the interface, and there will be differences to the shortcuts, the keyboard shortcuts. So, when there is a keyboard shortcut for a commonly used uh, command, that will be shown in the menu. Another menu worth exploring is plugins. This has a number of additional features that have been added or plugged in to the environment. One that I particularly like is the source code formatter. So by pressing the hot key that's listed in the menu, I can reformat my source code, and I can also select a number of options, so that, for example, if I wanted different styles of code formatting with brackets put on different lines and different sorts of indentation, then I can make adjustments here, and when I auto-format my code, that form of indentation will be used in the formatting. CodeLight has many more features than I've covered in this short video. So if you want to explore it further, you can go to the Help menu, select About, 
And there's a user forum where users ask questions and you might find information there. And also go to the main Codelight site and be sure to read the documentation.